Uh, this afternoon, we're going to be making a birthday cake for my special friend, Brianna, who's going to be celebrating her birthday on Monday. And later on, uh, when we finish this cake, Brianna's going to make a cameo appearance so you can see who she is. So I started out by making an angel food, which is Brianna's favorite cake. And in the old days when my mother used to bake, it was completely made from scratch. Um, I just looked up an old recipe of hers. She had 12 egg whites and sugar and all kinds of other things. But if you're kind of busy, Betty Crocker does a really nice job too. So it's really easy. You um, put the cake mix in your bowl and you add like a cup and a quarter of water, beat it up for about three minutes, put it in your angel food cake pan. And I don't know if so a lot of people make angel food cakes or not, but the easiest one is when the insert comes out. You don't grease it after you've whipped it, um, your batter for about three minutes. Then you just put your cake batter in your pan and bake it at, I think it's 350 for 45 minutes. And you want it to come out you know, nice and brown. You don't want it to be light because then it's going to be soggy. And I actually made this yesterday morning, made it ahead of time. So um, with this recipe, we're going to take the angel food and make it into a special dessert for Brianna. So we're going to start by cutting um, part of the, the top of the cake off. And this is my, my bread knife, which is a serrated knife. And you just go in like a sawing action. And if you have it on a plate that you're able to turn it, that works the best. So then you can, can turn it and try to get an, an even piece if you can when it comes off. Kind of put your knife on the inside, the hollow part of the cake. Okay. And then we're just going to turn it upside down like that. And the cake is apart just a little bit, but that's okay. So we'll cover that up with frosting. The excess crumbs we're just going to take off. And then the recipe calls for making a ditch in your, your cake, which is just taking out part of the, the inside of your cake. You want to have, on your cake, you're going to want to have both sides in there, but it's just the middle part. And you can either take you know, some kind of a little tongs or just use your, your fingers. You don't want to go all the way to the bottom because then when you're serving your guests the cake, you want to, to have cake on the bottom too. But if you have something with like that's like a little tongs or tweezers, then it can grab the, the angel food and that comes out really well. So we're just going to go all of the way around the cake to make our little ditch. And Saturday, the weekend, is supposed to be a perfect weekend for weather. So I'm sure Brianna will have lots of fun things in store for her. In fact, maybe a surprise birthday party from her, her friends. I don't know. Okay. So that's good. So we've got our ditch ready. Okay. And then, because it takes a little while to do the rest of the recipe, I beat uh, three cups of whipping cream this morning. And after you, you have it a, a thick, the thickness that you want, the whipping cream should be, then I added um, two thirds of a cup of powdered sugar and a half a cup of cocoa. And because you don't want the cocoa to be, um, have, have clumps or you know those, those little specks on there, I sifted it so it, it turned out um, you know, a, a nice consistency. So what we're going to do next is fill in this ditch with some of this chocolate filling. The cake will look like you slaved away all day long and um, you really don't have to and it's just a nice special dessert. I've made these before for our kids to have something a little bit special on their birthday. And when you slice your cake and you see that inside chocolate, it makes it extra nice. So we're just going to fill it like that. And then we're going to add the top of the cake then. So now we have to figure out where we had the other piece so that it's going to be somewhat even. 
So to top the cake, we are going to put slivered almonds that I've sauteed in just a little bit of butter. It, it doesn't take much. In fact, some people, I think, even do their sauteed almonds and they just put them in the pan because there's enough oil in the almonds. But I just add a little bit of butter and you just, uh, I've had this on now for about 15 minutes and you have to be careful to watch because all of a sudden they look white and then before you know it you've got burnt almonds. So you just want to keep stirring them and when they start to get lightly browned, you don't want them to burn, but you can tell when they're getting you know, brown and they'll be crunchy to put on your cake. And I also use almonds when I make uh, an Asian salad, the, um, the, the, the coleslaw Asian salad. You use almonds in that salad. And there's some other uh, recipes that I also use the, the almonds. All those, um, another recipe that I, I make a Greek salad and um, you don't have to you don't have to saute the the almonds for that one. But so I've got them out on some paper towel. So we're just going to let the grease just kind of drain out a little bit. And we'll also let them cool while we're frosting the cake. Okay, and then I like to take um, this type of a, of, of a spatula or spreader and we're going to then just start frosting the cake. So you can start at the top and just spread it all around. You want to get some on the inside of your cake too because you have that, that hollow hole there. So we're going to put some inside. And if you were making your frosting right before you spread it, you wouldn't have to add the extra cream. And I add either cream or milk just to give it a better consistency um, to spread. Otherwise, it, it gets hard when it's in the refrigerator all day. So just a little bit to just um, get it a little bit softer. And then we're going to just finish frosting the rest and you can just you know kind of go in in circles when you you frost it you want to get it all covered and if you think you don't have enough frosting you can always even whip four cups instead of the the three cups if you like to have it a little bit thicker on the sides When I grew up, uh, my mother used to make an angel food cake, which was for a really special event. It would be, um, you know, maybe for a birthday or if we were having like the, my aunts and uncles coming over. And like I said, she made it totally from scratch. And she would make a boiled frosting or a seven minute frosting, which I don't make too often, but I, I have made them. And I, we had a, a wedding reception that we, we did uh, a year or two ago. And she wanted cupcakes with coconut. And if you want coconut to sit well, or to stay on your frosting, the boiled or seven minute frosting works really well. So we also then enjoyed seven minute frosting with an angel food that I made in order to use up this big batch of, of extra boiled frosting that we had. And sometimes I feel kind of guilty because I've baked all of my life. I've, I've loved to bake and try to teach, you know, my, my kids and they've, they've helped throughout their years of, of growing up. And, and when I look at some of the, the different things that, you know, my mother cooked that I haven't made for my kids, I feel, almost feel kind of guilty because I think they're, they're missing out on, you know, some of those traditional foods that, that I grew up with. But then we kind of have our, our own tradition so they have other special treats and desserts and things that that we make for them too. I grew up in a large family and I, I think um, even today I think too when when whether somebody you know you have a death in the family or 
you have somebody that just had a new baby. I think food is, is just a big part of, of celebrating and um, kind of embracing life, I guess. And um, I, I think that's why I've, I've always loved baking, because you can create things and if somebody's down, you can make them something, and I think that just helps them kind of lift their, their spirits to kind of boost them. I think that's what, what food does. So we are almost done. And this frosting might be a little bit softer than what it would need to be, um, but then when you put it in the refrigerator, it will harden up anyway, so it should be fine. When you beat your whipping cream, you want to make sure that it's, it's cold and even putting your bowl in the refrigerator to have your, your bowl extra cold too will help your, your whipped cream to turn out even better. And another little trick that I, I used I think on my uh, interview when I was making the tiramisu on my very first show uh, a little trick, especially if you're making three cups of, of whipped cream, that's a lot of, of whipping cream, and it's going to be splattering as you are whipping it. So when I use this bowl um, before I put the beaters in the, in, in the uh, electric mixer that I use, I put a piece of paper towel um, uh, on there so that then you have the paper towel that's actually going to cover your bowl and that prevents all of that uh, splattering. And I've learned that the hard way because I've made lots of things and you've got your, your whipped cream that is kind of splattering all over and other you know things that you have to use with liquid and it just makes kind of a, a mess so it's just nice to avoid that mess. Okay, so there is the frosted cake. And now we're going to add those cooled almonds that are all set to go. And we're just gonna put those on, on top. And I used a half a cup of almonds. Any kind of slivered almonds works. And you could even do, if, if somebody doesn't like almonds, you could frost your, your cake and put almonds on half of your cake and leave the other half, you know, just uh, with the frosting. Because um, you, you wouldn't want somebody not to be able to enjoy a wonderful dessert because they didn't like almonds or other kinds of nuts. So take those off and we're almost done. Okay. So our cake is done. And now we need to get Brianna <coughs> so I can present her with her birthday cake. Okay, this is Brianna Speth, and she actually does the videotaping for all of my cooking shows. So it was really special when she told me last, the last time that we did our show, two weeks ago, that she was going to have her birthday. So I said, what kind of cake do you like? And she said, angel food. So what do you think, Brianna? Uh, it looks amazing. Oh, cool. And, you know, we have our friend Mike Warren who works at WDLB mm -hmm. and the, for the community television. So Mike was going to join us this mm -hmm. afternoon, but then he decided not to come for He's whatever reason. Out. He's missing out. So Mike, see, I was even planning to have three plates of dessert. So we're just going to leave that empty plate there. And um, you're really missing it. So we're going to cut into this cake. Okay. I'm going to get back behind the camera. Sure. Okay. okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> so again, because of it being an angel food, you're going to want to just kind of do that sawing action all the way down. And you probably will want about a, your cake to be about an inch, um, about an inch, inch thick. Okay, and there's a second piece there. That's a little bit better, I think. And then Brianna needs that extra frosting that came off. So, here is Brianna's birthday cake, and now her mother or father or whoever is going to make her a cake probably can get out of having to make that cake. So, Brianna, and from a slice of heaven, enjoy your cake and happy cooking. <laughs>